Hello, so in today's lesson we're going to be finding the mean for a set of values. So let's have a look at this picture of these children and the slices of pizza on their plate. How many children can you see with pizza in the picture? Okay, yes, yeah, so there are five children in the picture and how many slices of pizza can you see in the picture? Okay, so I can see a total of 15 slices of pizza on all those plates. But how much pizza would that be per child if we wanted them all to get the same amount, if we wanted to share it out fairly? So to work that out, we'd have to add up the total number of slices of pizza and divide this by the number of children. So that would be 15 slices of pizza divided by five children. So if we wanted to divide it up fairly, each child would get three slices of pizza each. This is the same as finding the average number of slices per child. And in this case, we call that average the mean. So the mean number of slices of pizza is three in this example. Have a look at this bar chart. So we've got some children on the left hand side and underneath we've got the number of cupcakes that they bought. How many children are shown in this bar chart? OK, so we can see there are four children in the bar chart. How do we work out how many cupcakes those four children bought altogether? OK, so we'd have to add up the totals for each of those bars. So the first child with the pink bar bought three cupcakes. The second child with the yellow bar bought just one cupcake. The third child with the green bar bought six cupcakes. And the fourth child with the orange bar bought four cupcakes. So if we add up the individual bars to find the total, we also call that finding the sum, there are 3 plus 1 plus 6 plus 4, which is 14 cupcakes altogether. How do we find the mean number of cupcakes bought by each child? What calculation do we have to do? OK, so the mean number of cupcakes bought by each child is equal to the total number of cupcakes divided by the number of children that we've got. So the mean number of cupcakes is 14, the total number of cupcakes, divided by 4, the number of children. So 14 divided by 4 is 3.5 or 3.5. So we can see in this example that the mean doesn't have to be a whole number. It can be a fraction, three and a half, or a decimal fraction, 3.5. OK, so in this table, we've got the number of goals scored by one group, a group of countries, in a World Cup tournament. We've got the name of the country. Colombia, Greece, the Ivory Coast and Japan and the number of goals that each of those countries scored. What was the mean number of goals scored by the teams in this group in the tournament? Just pause the video now while you calculate that out. OK, so what calculation did you have to do when you calculated the mean? So we know to work out the mean, the mean average, 
it's equal to the total number of goals scored divided by the number of teams we've got in that group. So what was the total number of goals scored? The 17 goals scored and four teams. So the mean we work out as 17 divided by four. So the answer you should have got in your calculation was four and a quarter or 4.25. If you remember from the previous slide, the mean average doesn't have to be a whole number. So just to recap what we've just learned, to calculate the mean of a set of values, you add up the total of those values, which we also call the sum of the values, and divide that value by how many separate values there are. So I'm thinking of three numbers that have a total of 30. What could those three numbers be? Write them down. So give me another three numbers that they could be. Just pause the video while you write those down. Okay, and can you think of another set of three values that could have the total of 30? And just pause the video while you write those down. Okay, so you should have three sets of three numbers and in each case, they all add up to 30. So you could have said, 10 and 10 and 10. You could have said 9 and 11 and 10. You might have written down 7 and 7 and 16. Our lots and lots of other combinations of three numbers that add up to 30. But what would be the mean in each and every case? You remember the mean is the total of those values or the sum of those values divided by how many values you've got. So in this case the mean would be 30 because we know the numbers have a total of 30 divided by 3 because we know there are three numbers. So in every case the mean value would be 10, 30, divided by 3 equals 10. OK, so I'm now going to give you another practice activity that involves calculating the mean. There are four nine-year-old children and a teacher in a classroom. The average age, the mean age, for the five people in the classroom is 12. How old is the teacher? Just pause the video now while you try to work that out. OK, did you have a go? Let's see. So just to remind you, the mean, the mean average, is equal to the total of all the values divided by how many values we've got. So we know that the mean is 12. And that is equal to the total of all the ages, that's the four children and the teacher, divided by how many people we've got, which is five. So 12 is equal to the total of the ages divided by five. What number, when you divide it by five, gives you 12? Pause the video while you work that out. So you should know, if you know your 5 times table, that 12 is equal to 60 divided by 5. So in other words, the total of the people's ages, that's the four children and the teacher, must equal 60. So 12 equals 60 
divided by 5. So now, what is the age of the teacher? Well, the total of all the ages together have to add up to 60. We know that the four children are all nine years old. So that's nine plus nine plus nine plus nine plus the age of the teacher equals 60. So the teacher has to be 24. Four lots of nine is 36. 36 plus 24 equals 60. And hopefully you manage to work that out for yourself. And so finally, in this last slide, I'm going to leave this as your additional challenge. Okay. So it says that three different numbers have an average of eight. And what could those numbers be? And there you can see three different attempts at showing that calculation with a bar model. But in each one of those, there's been a mistake. Can you work out what the mistake is in each case? And can you explain it to somebody else? I'll pause the video while you do that. OK, so hopefully you've managed to explain those mistakes. Good luck with calculating the mean in the lessons tomorrow and the next day.